why do you think Les Mis is so iconic and loved? Oh, do you know what? That's what is such a difficult, difficult question to answer. I think because you can relate to someone in the piece I think that's the, the easiest way to describe it you know everyone has their struggles everyone has um, their downfalls everyone has their highs and their lows and I think you can see that in so many different uh, parts uh, throughout Les Mis not just Jean Valjean's um, travels and discoveries do you know what I mean I think uh, you can you can pinpoint some moments in yourself in every single character and just by chance, we kind of follow the um, with the follow Jean Valjean's journey, but uh, you could actually just follow anyone's journey and have probably the most exciting kind of sequel to it or something like that. And I think that's what's so special about it. You know, it's it's not just um, one main person's uh, journey throughout the musical, which sometimes I feel like a lot of musicals are we focus really on one part quite heavily. But um, you know, without for example, the ensemble, the show would be nothing. You know, every single person on that stage, truly, and that's from me speaking from playing ensemble with one line to, you know, to playing Javert. I think it's it's just one of those shows that is just incredible to be part of and incredible to watch, regardless of who's playing the roles or what it is. You know, as soon as that kind of overture starts, you're, you're taken away and it's incredible. Yeah, definitely. I think... The ensemble plays such a big part in the music as well because you've got all those different harmonies and I think that's what yeah definitely makes it stand out. Do you remember your first encounter with Les Mis? Um, I actually my first encounter I, I played um, Angeras in the school edition which I'm sure every single person in the musical theatre industry has played uh, done Les Mis school edition at some point. Um, yeah I was that was my kind of first, but I had no idea about um, musicals at that point. I, I started singing quite late and um, I think I was about 17, 18 when that was, that kind of happened. It was my first big, big kind of amateur dramatic musical. And that was just, I mean, it absolutely blew my mind. And I think that kind of stirred the, the love for the show and the passion for the music. And that's still to this day, it absolutely gives me chills. Yeah, that's pretty cool that you played it at school and then played it in the West End. I, I know, was I'm actually, very lucky. I was actually lovely lady number one, um, and I am yet to fulfil that in the West End. <laughs> there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> still time. Brilliant. Um, and can you tell us a bit about your lamer's journey? Because as you said, you've been ensemble, you've been in rollers, and now Javert. Yeah, How's I it mean, been? it's been a, a mental, mental journey, and you know, I think a lot of people kind of have that one show that they strive to want to be in when they're younger or, you know, when they're coming out of drama school and mine was always lame as, and I was just like, wow, if I could just sweep the floor, I know that's very cliche to say, that would be a, a dream come true. And I can't think of what year, I think it was the 29th uh, anniversary year. Uh, and I was second cover on Um I actually never got to play on in that first year. Um, and then, um, the MD at the time, Adam Rowe, told me I should go for the role of Andreas for the 30th. Um, and I was lucky enough to be given the part. And then I actually left the production. And I think it was that was a, a big decision for me because I was so in love with the show. Um, and I just didn't want to get to that point where the show bored me or I felt that like I wasn't giving it a million percent because I just knew how 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 lucky I was to be in that position to, to be in that show and I knew that if I ever allowed myself to get to the point where I felt that I was letting myself down or letting down even one member of the audience or the cast or crew I just didn't want it to be in that situation so I left um, and I went to do Wicked which was fantastic while I was gone and obviously my contract was kind of coming to an end at Wicked I was asked to come and audition for Jean Valjean and Javert which obviously I was I jumped at the chance and then the concert kind of came around and uh, they said, did you want to reprise the role as, as Andras? And I was like, well, of course, you know, I, I, I'm, it's never been one of those things. You know, a lot of people kind of said, is it a backward step? Is it, you know, you, you played it and now you play Javert and you're going back. To me, I don't really care about stuff like that. Um, you know, I just love to, I, I, I just love to sing and I love singing the score of Les Mis. It's, it challenges me every day vocally. Uh, emotionally in, and it, that's 
regardless of whatever role. And, you know, to stand up on stage with some of the greats of Les Mis, Michael Ball, Alfie Bowe, John Owen Jones, um, Katie Seacom, was just like a golden ticket. You know, it was like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory being asked to sing that uh, with them guys. I was, I, I couldn't wait, you know, to work back with my best friend, Rob, um, I just jumped at the chance and it was just a huge success. And it was, you know, you were standing among giants. That's the only way to stand. Like, it was just so intimidating. I remember the first day I started at that stage concert and I was just like, wow, I, I cannot believe how lucky I am and, you know, how grateful I am to be here. And I, I it probably took my breath away, just the sheer amount of talent. It was like, uh, you know, Cameron McIntosh just picked his favorites or whatever and just people that you kind of idolized you know Earl Carpenter and even people from the ensemble like Gronya. you know she was one of the longest running Fontines and you know her she was standing next to her son who was in the show as well you know Kieran, Kieran Bowling and it was just it was just mind-boggling every day you kind of said and you heard all these stories from you know from the show from years 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 ago it was just unbelievable um and then to then go back to open a brand new uh production as Javert that was a, an honor in itself, you know, to close the original and then to open the, the, the new production. It was just, it was just a gift. Honestly, I, I, I just count my, my blessings so much with this show. It's, it's, um, you know, Cameron has completely changed my life. That's the only way. And he's a great friend. And I feel like he's, he's really mentored me as, as a singer and as a performer and helped my career grow to what it is and I, I don't think I'd be half the performer if it wasn't for him kind of saying let's do it and then hopefully hopefully fingers crossed we can uh, bring the show back together and, and and you know hopefully ignite that flame again of, of theatre kind of coming back and I think that's the, the main message about this whole situation it's you know it's a, a bit of a bitter pill really because you kind of want to be excited um, but I feel devastated for the amount of people that have lost all their jobs and that would be dying to be in this situation that I potentially could be in. And uh, I just feel like we just need to kind of hold the beacon up and just really push forward to make sure we show just how viable and, and, and how much we need theatre and, and entertainment in, in our lives, really. It's true. And I think um, part of kind of, I think there's, it's been a hard year, but I think there's been like bits of positivity. And I think one of those bits was the Britain's Got Talent performance um, and everyone being there. How was it performing on Britain's Got Talent? Again, that was a, a bit of a pinch me moment, you know, being, you know, stood back with, with John Owen Jones and, and good friend Michael Ball. And it was just, it was just wonderful. And then just to be able to stand there and I've never seen Mary Poppins yet, shoot me now. Um, but, you know, to see the cast, absolutely giving it I mean we, we rehearsed it so many times and obviously we, we were doing Les Mis we just got to stand there but the cast of Mary Poppins absolutely busted it you know 15 16 times full out 100% I was just in in awe of every single member of that cast just watching them and then obviously we got to you know see Killian and um, and Holly do their rendition of uh, Phantom of the Opera which was fantastic because I haven't been able to see that because they've been on tour which was, and then that was shut early which was just a huge huge devastation to the, the the show and the production and everyone on that company as well so you know it, it was just like a hats off moment to to Cameron again to, to enable three huge musicals to stand in one place and show we can do this and we can do it safely and effectively and it was really emotional it really really was um and I felt very very lucky again uh, to be in in these really really difficult times that a lot of uh, people in our industry are dealing with at the moment to have that one day just to break away from the job that I'm doing now just to have that one day to sing again and hopefully kind of show the public that we we need to come back and we need to be looked after. Yeah definitely. Um, in your time at the stage concert you kind of said it was incredible. Um, how were there any like specific moments that are most memorable to you? Um, when I was watching yesterday, you were singing with Michael Ball. That must have been pretty, pretty cool to say that you've done that. Yeah, I, I, it it is. I, I mean, there's just not many moments that I can really stand there and kind of go, one is better than the other. You know, to sing with Michael Ball, who is 
a musical theatre legend, an icon, and no one's ever done the duet of stars as a as a kind of um, new little song or a snippet. And for you know for him to pass me the coat was just it, it was just a moment that I'll never ever ever forget. I was I was so nervous. Um, but the relief and you know it was all all live and obviously it was at the same point of doing the dvd which was kind of i'd never done uh behind the, the cameras and stuff like that so that was it we actually kind of changed the show it was just those that day of filming was just like wow as if this is actually happening and you know we all ever i think everyone always kind of um says oh i wish i was in a cast recording or I wish i was in a dvd just because i think that's you know people of my age I mean, I thought it sounds really old, you know, but I remember, you know, going to the shops and uh, sh uh, shops like Dress Circle and buying musical theatre CDs and taking them home and listening to it and going, wow, I, you know, I can't wait to be on a cast recording or I, I hope I get to be on a cast recording. Um, and, you know, to be part of that was just, it was like in a, in a little nutshell, just absolutely fantastic. I was so, so lucky. And have you listened to the cast recording yet or do you think you will or is that something you find a bit awkward? I actually haven't because I, I do find it really difficult to listen to it because I, I'm such, uh, I always just say, no, nope, don't like that, don't like that. I mean, when, when it first came out uh, in, this, in the cinemas and we were able to go and watch the cinema, I did go and see it with my fiancé and, um, and my mum and we sat in the cinema and uh, the way it was shot was just beautiful I mean the direction and everything from uh, James Powell and, and JP was just exquisite like but I always was finding faults and like, I could have done that better or done this should have done this better and you know I think that but that's the way that of an actor I think you know I don't think you're ever happy and I think that's a, a positive you know if we were ever happy we'd it would be a boring boring performance do you know what I mean but um I haven't listened to the recording yet because it does a uh, fill me with fear <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, is there a particular line in the show that you like singing? I think there's so many good like one-liners in Les Mis. Oh. Have you got one? Mm. Any one-liners? I think uh, if if we're probably referring to Angeras, I think the beginning of "Do You Hear the People Sing" after you've just been, you know, singing with all, all the all the students, all the lads, all your best mates kind of in the ABC cafe and, and then it all can completely go silent and then you get to start that iconic song of Do You Hear The People Sing? I think that's definitely a moment that is just wonderful. But Andras is a very, very, it's a, a gift of a role, but it's also, it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for the, the students behind you. So um, it's kind of one of those ones, it's, uh, even though it's kind of a, a named role as it were it actually feels like if you didn't have those boys to back you or didn't have your friends with you it, it would be pointless so it, it's kind of a funny funny role to play whereas Javert's quite uh you know he's, he's very on his own and um very driven with his thought, thoughts and I can't think um I, you know I just think even just the beginning of, I don't think Javert has to say anything but just the beginning of stars is is a moment where you kind of have to take a breath and just think about what you're about to to attempt to do. <laughs> yeah, and you attempted but, very well. Oh, good. Ah, oh, bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, and it must be so interesting playing Andreas and also Javert, and they're kind of like oh, like enemies, I guess. Yeah, Is that? Definitely. Something that you have to kind of like say in the like before you start, like okay, right tonight I am playing this one. Yeah, I mean it was really it was it's, it's um definitely a, a learning thing for me as an actor. Um, I think most people, well, I like to think most people, you know, try and do as much research as they can. And I've actually over my time of being in Lamez read the the old big Bible of Lamez like four times, um, and just kind of refer back to the characters and. Uh, try to find your own path and I think that's what's also really difficult about being in Les Mis because there's been so many people that have played the roles before you it's um, you know you're never going to please everyone you're never going to please the amazing fans you know you can only do your best and kind of do it interpret it the way that you want to because you're never going to be the Philip Quash you're never going to be the Earl Carpenter you're never going to be uh, Nick Greenshield you know all these incredible people that have played the role or playing it at the same time and I think that sometimes can weigh so heavy on your shoulders because you want to be exactly as fantastic as they are. Um, so I think you can only 
do your journey and hopefully be as true to the story as you possibly can and, and that kind of hopefully portrays the show in the right way um i think i've just kind of detoured off the question a little bit but um it is i think that what is they're so they have they're very different uh, in the, in terms of their characters, but they're very similar in certain ways. You know, they're both very driven characters. So I think they have their similarities um, and their passions. I think the, the main difficulty is one's, you know, singing the top tenor lines and one's singing the bass. And I, <laughs> I think trying to change your voice for that is probably the, the most difficult thing. What are, the, I mean, obviously there's big differences between the concert version and the stage show. Is there anything, any differences that kind of surprised you about the two? No, I, I, you know what, it's, I, I think because I'd never seen a touring version of Les Mis, which was, you know, kind of very similar to the new production at the Sondheim, you know, obviously it's been adapted and changed and there's been more added to it, but it was very similar to that kind of production, you know, obviously we lost the Revolve, um, so, you know, you, it was like being in a film set, that's the only way I can describe it, I've never been in a musical like it, uh, even though I'd already been in the show, um, you know, from coming from the revolve and having that simplicity and everything in its darkness to this, the the lighting and the set design and the costumes and the new production were just, it was just mind boggling. I, I just kind of stood there and was like, wow, how, you know, it, we take the audience not only on this musical journey, but this this journey with, with your visuals, it was just incredible. But I think what's so so incredible about the the concert version is that it just shows how good the musical is. It doesn't need the glitz and glamour. It doesn't need um, all, all of that amazing extra stuff that only enhances it because the score and the lyrics are so beautiful and the story is so iconic that you can literally just close your eyes and just disappear. And it was actually, you know, it's a completely different um, acting lesson for all of us as performers, you know, instead of looking to the, the the actor next to you or giving it to the person to the right or left, you know, now everything was facing forward and, you know, you weren't really allowed to think. And I think you had to learn a completely different craft. So it was, it was two completely different entities in one, but they both worked. If you could play any other character in Les Mis, gender isn't a restriction, um, who would you play? Oh. That is a good one. Um, I think I'd be Madam T. I think, you know, I think I did, yeah. it just that that character just absolutely kills me. It just makes me laugh so so much. And I think the the duet just you know, with Mr T and Madam Tanadio, the work how they work together is just fantastic. It has me in stitches. However many times I hear it, so yeah, I'd say Madam T. Finally, if you could give Enrolas any advice, what would you give him? Well, obviously, don't die. Mm. If that's a spoiler, yeah, I don't know. I think he has to be a bit softer with some of his friends. I think you know, there's always there's you know just a bit of niceties would wouldn't go down go go down a miss a little bit. Uh, I think that might just <laughs> get a couple more yeah. people on his side. But you know, he's he's fantastic character and he knows exactly what he wants and what he's doing and and he sees the bigger picture and I think sometimes unfortunately you, you get blindsided don't you and you get tunnel visioned and um and unfortunately things don't go their way but I think he's he's pretty pretty bang on with with his actions if I'm honest.